You are listening to continuing coverage of the trial of Chad Daybell from True Crime Today and the Hidden Killers podcast. Let's go back to the courtroom. And if we look at these, um, can you indicate the date on these messages for the record? July 15th of 2019. So these are moving to the next day from the previous messages. Correct. What is it about these particular messages that caught your attention? This is an example of how Lori Vallow sought to manipulate Chad Daybell uh, in the immediate aftermath of Charles Vallow's death. And in that text from Chad to Lori, could you read the last line? He says, you are my wonderful best friend that I can't live without. And again, during this time, Tammy Daybell is still alive. Correct. And the manipulation that you're indicating is Lori's response there. Could you read the first line? Yes. She replies, and yet you are so sad, missing you. Referencing back to his message to her that he couldn't live without her. Correct. Chad Daybell tells Lori Vallow how much he loves her and he can't live without her. And her response to that is, and yet you are, in fact, living without me. So sad. And moving to the next slide. Again, I will pause to allow the jurors to read. And could you indicate the date on these messages for the record? July 18th of 2019. What about these messages stood out to you? Well, this is a a series of texts that occupies this slide and the next three slides, all regarding the same subject. And that is Lori Vallow has just found out uh, that she is not the beneficiary to Charles Vallow's $1 million life insurance policy. And she's telling Chad that. Correct. Going to the next slide, I'm going to pause to allow the jurors to read. And you indicated the, this is a continuation of the previous slide, correct? Correct, uh, as well as the next two slides. In looking at this particular slide, there is a reference to bringing down the Gaddy Antons, especially Brandon. Yes. Through the investigation, did you determine who that Brandon would be that is being referenced? That is Brandon Boudreaux, Melanie Boudreaux's uh, soon-to-be ex-husband. Through your investigation, did you learn anything in relation to Brandon and an investigation involving him? Yes. What did you learn? What Could you clarify what did we learn about? Yes, sorry. Did you learn anything about an incident being investigated by the Gilbert Police Department involving Brandon as a victim? Yes. And what did you learn regarding that? On um, November 2nd of 2019, as Brandon Boudreaux was pulling in his driveway uh, of his home in Arizona, uh, an individual uh, shot at him uh, with a rifle, uh, narrowly missing him. And you said November 2nd. Is it possible it was October 2nd? I'm sorry, you are correct. It is October 2nd. Excuse me. And that was October 2nd of 2019? Correct. Do you know... um, did the reference bringing down the Gaddy Antons mean anything, or did you learn what that was referencing? I learned that that is a reference. Uh, the, the name Gaddy Anton has to do with a group of people that's referenced in a book of scripture called the Book of Mormon. The Gaddy Antons were robbers and thieves, and so the word Gaddy Anton is indicative of someone who is a thief or a robber or a a bad individual. And as Lori's telling Chad that she's no longer the beneficiary, can you read the last text into the record? Yes, that's a text from Chad Daybell to Lori Vallow. It says, hmm, it will be interesting if it got changed after he had two bullets in his chest. And going to the next slide, again, I'm going to pause to allow the jurors to read. And Agent Hart, I think you indicated this is also a continuation from the previous two slides. Is that correct? Yes, it is. There are some additional references on this particular slide that stood out to you or particular statements. Yes, primarily the last line. And what was it about that that stood out to you? 
that's a text from Lori Vallow to Chad Daybell. And so she had found out that the beneficiary for the life insurance policy had been changed in March of 2019. And then she says, so it was probably Ned before we got rid of him. Ned is the name of the supposed dark entity that uh, Chad Daybell had assigned to Charles Vallow. And then there's a reference there before we got rid of him, correct? Correct. Did did you learn what the 4000 a month from SS was in reference to through the investigation? Yes, that's a reference to uh, money that would still be coming to Lori Vallow through Social Security for um, her children, primarily for for JJ. And then if we move to the next slide, again, I'm going to pause to allow the jurors to read. Very well. And when we look at this slide, can you read the date on these messages into the record? Yes, these five messages are all from July 21st of 2019. We've talked about who Ned is. Through the investigation, did you learn who Rhonda is that's being referenced? Yes, Rhonda is the name assigned to the dark spirit or dark entity uh, that Chad Daybell assigned to Kay Woodcock. Judge, I'm going to object on foundation. Sustained. Agent Hart, as part of your investigation, did you review other documents? Many, yes. Did you review other reports? Yes. Did you discuss this matter with other investigators? Yes. And based on your review in this case, did you determine who Rhonda was referencing? Yes. And who? And I'm going to renew my objection, Judge. You can talk about all the reports you want, but unless they get into specifics, telling me how he came to that conclusion, which documents, when, where, and time, it's still not sufficient foundation. Uh, for purposes of this direct, I do find there's sufficient foundation. I'll overrule the objection. You can cross on that, of course, Mr. Pryor, when it's your chance for cross-examination. Who did you determine Rhonda to be referencing? Kay Woodcock, who is Charles Vallow's sister. Now, there's references in some of these messages as well to working on someone. Through your review of the iCloud and messages, did you determine anything in relation to those working on, or did that stand out to you? Yes, this is a phrase that we see repeatedly in the iCloud, and it actually has a dual meaning. When they're referencing somebody who Chad Daybell has determined to have a dark spirit or a dark entity working on them has a negative connotation. When it's someone who's determined to be light or good, then working on them is an uplifting or a building connotation. Agent Hart, as we've reviewed some of these messages that were around or shortly after Charles' death, we're seeing some of them. In your review of the messages, did you ever see any signs of grief or sorrow from Lori Vallow? No. Did you ever see any signs of grief or sorrow from Chad Daybell? None. If we go to the next slide again, I'm going to pause to allow the jurors to read. And would you read the date of this message into the record? July 21st of 2019. And we've talked about James and Elena before. And this story, again, it references a prior period of time than when the message was being sent. Is that correct? Yes. So at this point in this narrative, uh, the dates are, this, is, this would be November 15th of 2018. And we saw a previous slide dealing with that same time frame. Is that correct? The previous slides were actually talking about that period of time between the end of October and prior to November 15th of 2018. This particular story talks about when Chad Daybell and Lori Vallow are now physically together in Mesa, Arizona on November 15th of 2018. And through the investigation, did you learn if Chad Daybell was in fact in Arizona in November of 2018? Yes, we verified that he was present on that specific date. Uh, we verified that he spoke at a Preparing a People conference there uh, during those 
dates of the 15th through the 17th of November 2018 and verified that he was physically present at other locations as well. And outside of the continuation of the James and Elena, were there specific things in this message that drew your attention? Yes. What were those? Primarily that there was a plan that had been revealed or uh, communicated to Chad that wasn't entirely clear to him yet, uh, but it included them being them, meaning Chad Daybell and Lori Vallow, uh, being together at the present time. So specifically, the plan was being revealed to Chad. Correct. And there's a reference of Chad and Lori having a mission together? Yes. And moving to the next slide, I'm again going to pause to allow the jurors to read. And Agent Hart, these messages were also sent on July 21st of 2019. Is that correct? Yes. In looking at these particular messages, was there anything that stood out to you? Yes, they're very insightful in that Chad, in his own words, is explaining the feelings he had for Lori Vallow within three weeks of meeting her, that they had progressed through this relationship. They had finally found their best friend that they could trust and confide in. And again, the period of time this message is referencing, both Lori and Chad were married to other people? Correct. And Lori Vallow responded to this message. Can you read her response? She loves it. And there's the reference in there to the three weeks and... Would this have been, was the meeting in November about three weeks after Chad and Lori met in real life? Yes, that's verified. Moving to the next message again, I'm going to pause to allow the jurors to read. And would you read the date of this message into the record? This is also July 21st of 2019. And this is a continuation of the James and Elena story being written? Yes. Are you aware of which time period this message is referencing. This is referencing a specific date of November 16th, 2019, or excuse me, 2018. And was there something about this particular part of the story that drew your attention? There were multiple things that drew my attention to this that I believe are pertinent to the investigation. Can we go through those one by one? Sure. What is the first one that drew your attention? So the first is that Chad Daybell and Lori Vallow uh, went to an LDS temple that has been verified. They attended the temple in Gilbert, Arizona on November 16th of 2018 together. Um, And that they then participated in a ceremony that is a a proxy ceremony for marrying people uh, who have already been deceased. And again, that was verified that they were at that temple together? Yes. And they reference the proceeding. After that, um, there's an indication in here, if you can read from the James and Elena knew. James and Elena knew that they were now sealed as husband and wife for eternity. Did that line stick out to you? Yes. This is Chad Daybell's writing stating that when he and Lori participated in this proxy ceremony, that somehow through that, they had become once again married for eternity. And then if we go to the last sentence, starting with they knew, would you read that into the record? Yes. They knew they had just begun a new journey together that was eternal and never-ending. Was there something about that particular line that caught your attention? Yes. This is the beginning of their uh, relationship uh, and continuation of that relationship in the coming months that encapsulate the time period of this investigation and the crimes that are alleged. And if we go to the next slide, again, I'm going to pause to allow the jurors to read. And these messages were also exchanged on July 21st of 2019. Is that correct? Yes, that's right. And in looking at these messages, were there things that caught your attention? 
Yes, two things primarily. And can you walk us through those? Yes. And the first is that Lori Vallow responds to those prior clips uh, that Chad wrote about James and Elena saying, it's making me so happy to read about our life, which is a verification that this is an autobiographical or factual account. And then what is the next thing? The next is the line from Lori Vallow to Chad Daybell, which says, I love you more than ever. I can't wait to be with you forever. I'm begging father and mother. That's my job tonight. To which Chad Daybell responds, I will be right beside you begging just as much. I need you desperately. And what, if anything, did that indicate to you about Chad and Lori's relationship? That they had a clear plan to be with each other, to be uh, together forever, and that they were both uh, begging God for that to happen. And again, when these messages are being exchanged, is Tammy Daybell still alive? She is. In your review of these iCloud accounts, was there ever any indication of Chad planning on getting a divorce? None. Ever any any indication of Chad planning on getting separated? No. Moving to the next slide. And again, I'm going to pause to allow the jurors to read. And could you please read the date of these messages into the record? July 22nd of 2019. You just talked about the previous slide indicating a plan to be together. Correct. What is it about these particular messages that stood out to you? Again, there are a couple of different things that that stood out as relevant. The first is the text from Chad Daybell to Lori Vallow referencing going to see a movie with Garth, who is his son. He then says, missing you desperately, but so excited to be with you. If you'll recall from a prior slide, there's a plan July 24th through the 26th for Chad and Lori to be meeting in person. And so the first line is, is a reference to their in-person meeting that's coming up. And then looking at Lori's response, is there something in there that drew your attention? Very much. She said, uh, I love you. You will enjoy the scenery. Looks like Kauai a lot. And then responds with another text saying, hopefully we will be there someday soon together. So there's a reference to Kwai. Yes. Do you know where Kwai is located? Yes, it's in Hawaii, in the Hawaiian Islands. What's Chad's response to that? Chad's response is significant. He says, that is the plan, exclamation point, and my greatest desire. And then we talked about Kwai being in Hawaii. Looking at Chad's final sentence there of the last message, could you read that into the record? Yes. I look forward to being on a tropical island with you. I asked you earlier if you knew when Chad and Lori got married. Do you recall when that was? November 5th of 2019. Do you know where they got married? I do. Where was that? Kauai. Do you know where Chad and Lori relocated eventually after getting married? Kauai. During the time those messages are being exchanged, was J.J. Vallow still alive? He was. Was Tylee Ryan still alive? She was. Was Tammy Daybell still alive? Yes, she was. Moving to the next slide. Again, I'm going to pause to allow the jurors to read. And Agent Hart, can you read the date these messages were sent into the record? July 26th of 2019. Looking at these messages, did certain parts of them catch your attention? Very much so, yes. And what is it about them that caught your attention, if you can walk us through that? Well, the time frame is important. So these messages were sent as Chad Daybell was returning home from having spent uh, two or three days from the 24th through the 26th with Lori Vallow. So um, he references that he's just gotten home back to his home in Rexburg and that he had a splendid time with her. And then he follows up with a uh, narrative or sentiment that he believes or feels that he's a grown-up version of Harry Potter who has to live with the Dudleys in a little space under the stairs. 
And then every few weeks he gets to escape and have amazing adventures with his goddess lover. The part that to me is most significant is the final sentiment where he says, uh, then I have to return to my place under the stairs, feeling trapped. But I sense permanent freedom is coming, exclamation point. And it, you indicated he just returned from the week at, or from the time with Lori, correct? Yes, these messages were sent upon his return back to his home in Rexburg. So he's referencing being back home with his family. He feels trapped. Correct. Looking at the next slide, and again, I'm going to pause to allow the jurors to read. And Agent Hart, if you can read the date these messages were sent into the record. July 28th of 2019. What about these messages stood out to you? There's a couple of things. Uh, this is in reference, just for context, to a trip that Lori Vallow was planning to take with Melanie Boudreau and Alex Cox to uh, Southern California. And in these, we see a message from Chad DeLore about no privacy here to hardly text. Do you, do you happen to know where Chad would have been located at that time? Judge Objection Foundation. Sustain. With these messages, was there any, indi through your investigation, was there any indication that Chad Daybell was going on a trip? No. The indication was Lori Vallow was going on a trip. Correct. So based on your investigation, Chad wasn't on, Chad wasn't leaving his home. Correct. Judge objection. This is leading. Well, well it was, but it's already been asked and answered. Then we see, um, looking at that third message on there, the, the text from Lori to Chad, is there something about that that drew your attention? Yes, this is approximately two weeks after Lori Vallow's husband, Charles Vallow, has been killed. She is now free from her marriage. Chad Daybell is not free from his marriage. And she says, I need a distraction while I'm waiting for you. And he replies, absolutely, I think you'll have a fun time. And Turning to the next slide, I'm going to pause to allow the jurors to look at these. And Counsel, could I have a quick sidebar? Yes. All right, thank you, Counsel. Uh, that last exhibit, I'll ask if the state would redact certain information off of that, and I'll permit time to do that. In addition, the court had previously discussed with Counsel our scheduling for today, given that it's Friday and we've been through a long week. Uh, I'm going to suggest we break for the day. Uh, we have advised the jurors previously we might be stopping early today. Ms. Blake, is this a good time for us to break until Monday? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Any objections from the defense? No objection, Judge. Thank you. All right, that will conclude evidence for this week. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, uh, at this time I do want to again admonish you, especially over this long weekend, please do not discuss the evidence you've heard here with anyone else, including amongst yourselves. You can only do that after deliberations begin. Please don't follow the case or investigate the case in any way so that you can remain objective and decide this case only on the facts and evidence you've seen here in court. With that admonishment then, thank you so much for your attentiveness this week. We will commence again 8.30 Monday with additional evidence in the state's case in chief. Uh, with that in mind, then, we'll go ahead and conclude for the week. All right. Please. All right. Thank you, everyone. We'll be in recess. Witness the lies. I didn't lie to you on that polygraph, I promise. The cover-ups. I could see his brain on <laughs> The moments they confessed. I grabbed one of the kitchen knives. I Outrageous police interrogations. I know, I forgot the head. I wanted the head. You have to see to believe. Oh my God. Law and crime interrogations. Subscribe today. There's more to come in the trial of Chad Daybell. Press subscribe so you don't miss any of our continuing coverage right here from True Crime Today and the Hidden Killers podcast.